Hi, and welcome to the Open Mainframe Summit Talk, Avoid Installing Open Source Malware. My name is Joe Bastian. Those of us who've worked with open source on the mainframe for any length of time realize the greatest question and challenge we face is how to deploy open workloads on a mainframe without compromising the security of the platform. Outages due to malware are bad on any platform, but the gravity of the problem is a lot greater if it occurs on the systems of record that so often run on the mainframe. If it seems that malware attacks are becoming more common and severe, it's really because they are, and several recent attack examples are worth reviewing. This might lead you to ask if open source is even compatible with systems that have to be absolutely secure. It's a good question to ask, and it's one that each of us are going to have to answer for ourselves, but I hope this session can help. We'll take stock of the layers of the security infrastructure available today and explore some of the best ways to leverage them in an enterprise environment. Some people, myself included, will suggest that we in the open source community are evolving the deployment model to more prominently feature trustworthy sources of binary content. Open source software provides a rich set of resources that can be used to protect your environment from attack, and we'll review how to best assemble those into a viable defensive architecture. We as mainframers understand the limited acceptance of our platform in the open source community, and we'll talk over some of the realities that we face as a community. And finally, I'll close with some suggestions on how to best navigate the open source world in a mainframe context. Dependency confusion is an attack vector that's gotten a lot of attention in 2021, and it's a useful technique to understand. It's widely used, can leverage almost any package or container repository for executable code, and it doesn't require an exploit of a vulnerability. It uses a perfectly valid repository behavior as a tool to attack weaknesses built into the DevOps pipelines of end users. The same attack can be used against individuals and large enterprises. The process is really pretty simple. You create a software package with a name that's the same or very similar to a widely accepted package. You load it with your malware payload. You give it a package version number of latest plus one and then you post it to a popular repository. This attack exploits a weakness that seems harmless. Automated DevOps processes manage currency by checking for new versions of packages that satisfy the dependency requirements of a given workload. In a lot of cases, these, the recipes for these workloads list a minimum version for a dependency, but not the originator of the content. If the package is in a repository, it's assumed to be from a proper source. Threat actors can easily post code to these repositories and post content that has ambiguous or misleading characteristics, thereby confusing the currency automation pipelines and causing them to download the packaged malware. Most, if not all of these well-known open source repositories implement defenses against this kind of attack, but it's up to the user to make use of them. As long as these repositories remain fully open to anyone who wants to post content, They'll enable users to make these kinds of mistakes. Bad actors who can land their malware in a repository or a registry have established their presence, and their next step is to find users who don't properly protect themselves. This is just one type of attack that's been replicated and used thousands of times since just since the beginning of this year. It might be reasonable to ask if open source software can even operate safely in an environment where security is the most important thing. As a member of the Open Mainframe Project, you have to know that I think it can. However, it doesn't come by default. Like security on the mainframe, it takes effort to create a defensible and resilient environment. In some ways, open source software is a popularity contest. You openly share your code because you want others to use it. But if no one notices or cares about your project, it's not going anywhere, and you'll be a very lonely developer. So things like ease of use, compatibility with existing DevOps processes, and accessibility from popular repositories is key. However, if security were of no concern to the open source community, it would have remained on the computing fringe and not dominate software development as it does today. It's nearly impossible to find any software offering created in the last decade that doesn't contain at least some open source. No one writes purely proprietary code anymore. 
a defensible open source configuration has to be assembled from a set of components that are available to everyone. It requires a discipline that many users ignore, but it can be done. The advantage with the, that the mainframe community has is that we have much better componentry to start with. Our encryption capabilities, homomorphic encryption, elliptic curve encryption, pervasive encryption architectures. These are foundational technologies that can underpin the secure configurations that aren't available on other platforms. And the interfaces to these have been open sourced to support adoption. There's a lot of mainframers that we have to offer to the open source community in the area of security, including a nearly reflexive thought process that includes security in every configuration and deployment decision. There's a rather robust security architecture that underpins nearly all software development today. This starts with the CVE and NVD databases that are used to record and communicate known problems with publicly available software. These allow rapid response to emerging threats and it's impressive to see how quickly the IT community can respond when necessary. Many of us have used these databases or had to patch code in response to a newly discovered problem. In addition to the vulnerability data collected here, NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, has defined a set of interfaces and protocols to make it possible to share this information with any interested party for no cost. This is a crucial set of technology that's made the world more secure for both the open and the mainframe communities. The mainframe development team at IBM has built a lot of its own security processes around this infrastructure. Above this is an application layer that's allowed the integration of this information into open and commercial offerings that's making software inherently more resistant to attack. Many of us work with open source libraries like GitHub or GitLab both of which can detect the use of vulnerable software packages and notify developers of problems that need to be resolved. Container image registries like Red Hat Key generate full vulnerability reports when new images are posted so the developer and potential users can see what problems the code's vulnerable to. Package repositories like PyPy support conventions where posted pro projects include a link to known issues in the project source. And commercial open source repository providers like Sonatype Nexus, JFrog Artif Artifactory, or Anaconda all make vulnerability scanning and reporting part of their offerings so that users can be notified when problems occur. All of this infrastructure is built upon the CVE and NVD databases from MITRE and NIST. These combined layers broadcast notifications of high severity problems in real time so that the development community can respond quickly to emerging attacks. This security infrastructure is very effective when it's used to the fullest extent of its capabilities and end users respond to problems in a timely fashion. None of this infrastructure is effective though if it's not used as intended. Secure malware defenses require continuous attention as attacks and remediations become known. Failing to respond to an emerging issue is as bad as failing to deploy any security measures. The open source community continues to evolve along with the tools and techniques of bad actors. In response to attacks like the dependency confusion examples I talked about previously, common public repositories are likely to enhance their content metadata to give end users more information about what they're about to download. More descriptive tags and labels that give the user a better picture of the content provider are helpful. Those repositories that offer a premium option will also likely include vulnerability scanning and reporting if they don't already. The commercial software repository providers like Nexus create the infrastructure for groups to host their own executable content channels and will even host the servers to support these channels. The open source delivery pipeline is evolving towards trustworthy providers who select and curate their collections of content and integrate key defensive measures into their implementation. Users can contract some of their defensive measures to trusted providers like this. Curated channel providers will no doubt be accused of creating walled gardens of open source software and interfering with the free and open operation of the open source community. It's important to note though that walled gardens require the exclusive use of a specific channel that locks users in. This does break the open source community model for sure. And there are examples of application stores that exhibit this behavior. Curated channels are non-exclusive though. 
They allow users to re reference multiple channels and they can be arranged in a search order if needed. This doesn't restrict the user choice, but it simply integrates common security measures into the content channel that the user would, would otherwise have to configure for themselves. So what's the best way for a mainframe administrator to incorporate best practices that leverage the security infrastructure that the open source community has to the fullest extent possible? If they do, will this be sufficient to provide enterprise level defenses against attack? The answer, of course, is unique to every enterprise and is shaped by the policies and procedures of a particular organization. In many cases, though, mainframe enterprises already include some of the key basic organization needed to accommodate open source. Staging areas for the development and vetting of new code are a common security measure that's probably a universal practice. No one develops code on a production machine. Not only does this protect the, the production environment from mistakes and bad intent, it isolates the mainframe from the outside world. Incorporating a secure open source environment involves plugging into the staging area and working within that environment. In many cases, the open, open source infrastructure can be implemented with off-platform hardware or in a cloud. Repositories, static code analyzers, and common pipeline infrastructure likely already exist in the enterprise. And using this for mainframe purposes often involves simply including mainframe executable content in that environment. There are likely additional steps that you might wanna take in the vetting process for mainframe frame production code but the base infrastructure often already exists. Some of this open source infrastructure runs today on the mainframe, and it may be operationally more efficient to locate this on a mainframe platform, either Linux or ZOS. The choice of where to locate staging infrastructure to provide the most effective vetting process and accommodate the organizational realities of an enterprise are what make defensive configurations unique to each organization. While I've been discussing mainframe participation in the open source community as an activity that the community embraces, there's just some realities we have to acknowledge. The open source community isn't monolithic. Projects differ in their acceptance of any new members, and we often hear that a given group doesn't have the bandwidth to work with another platform. Others are more open, and they're willing to include enhancements for the mainframe if we provide them. We can work with these groups, and the small number of projects willing to fully embrace the mainframe as a supportive platform. The open mainframe project exists in some measure to build an ecosystem of open source mainframers willing to advocate for the platform within these friendly projects. It's a long game to play, but we do see success in some key areas. Mainframers who need to deploy open source workloads can't wait for the broad open source community to fully embrace and support the mainframe. IBM's taking an initiative to create a curated channel of containerized executable content that provides building blocks to assemble workloads based on open source components. In addition to making content available that isn't present on common public channels, mainframers often require that it comes from a single trustworthy source. This channel is intended to support the adoption of containerized workloads on both Linux on Z and ZOX. ZOS via container extensions. The IBM and Linux One Container Registry was released as an early access program in March of this year, and, and it'll be evolving soon into a more official program. We attend, intend this to be a channel that includes content from trusted partners and eventually commercial offerings. Being a curated channel, it's not open to public postings of content. It's not meant to be a mainframe version of Docker Hub. It will provide a mean for providers of open source based content that can be certified as free of malware to reach mainframe enterprises that otherwise wouldn't allow that kind of content in. There are a lot of details about how this channel operates that are beyond the scope of this talk. For the moment, it only contains content built and provided by IBM, but access will open up for qualified providers over time. Those interested in knowing more should contact me directly at the email address on the title slide. The Open Mainframe Project hosts several sub-projects that help mainframers navigate through the open source ecosystem. One I'd like to highlight is the Ambitus Project, which is meant to facilitate adoption through examples, tooling, and samples. 
It's also a resource for those who want to enhance a given open source project and provide a home for future updates while they're being upstreamed. It's a publicly available location for developers to collaborate on projects that would otherwise be buried in a code library branch while waiting for approval of a pull request. Please see the Ambitus project at the OMP homepage if you're interested in knowing more. Extending the secure environment of the mainframe enterprise to include open source software is not an impossible task. The infrastructure that the open source community is effective when it's employed properly and leveraged to its fullest extent. There are a few key things to remember though as you work with this infrastructure. First, know who your partners are. This is really second nature for a mainframe community that's relatively small when compared with the larger IT ecosystem. It's important to remember though, that when you interact with the open source community, it can lead to a growth in number of partners that must be worthy of your trust. Next, keep current. This may be the most important of all security measures. It might not be intuitively apparent, but the old adage about fixing things that aren't broken doesn't apply. Old code becomes vulnerable over time as attackers have time to study it for weaknesses. Old code that works well can also drift from correct behavior as all the code around it evolves. Good relationships with your trusted partners and providers who also work in this space can help a lot to stay on top of things. Next, know what version of a piece of software that you want. Each package you download may have important capabilities that move forward from a prior version. Be as specific as possible about the versions you require for package download and deployment, and never take the version labeled latest. This can open you up to configuration mistakes that lead to vulnerabilities. Finally, use all the available information to trust in the origin and behavior of the content you're downloading. Many repositories include metadata about the content they serve that can aid your decision, whether those are manual or automated decisions, about whether this content is free of malware. All the discussions I've outlined here speak to the supply side of the open source equation. Defending your content acquisition pipeline and best practices is essential to creating a secure enterprise. There's a lot of additional infrastructure that can be employed to defend the operation of your enterprise as well. Understanding suspicious or malicious behavior at runtime is equally important. And there's lots of help in this space too. Secure enterprises require care and oversight that you don't have to provide alone. We here at the Open Mainframe Project, along with our partners, are building a community of members with a shared interest in seeing the mainframe be a vital part of an open software ecosystem. Consider becoming a member and sharing your knowledge. We'll all be better and more secure for it. Thank you.